Welcome to the Unnamed Sports Podcast. I'm Brian Hill. I'm, I'm Rob Vitsigara. Uh, this week, we're going to go over, obviously, the Super Bowl. It's uh, the biggest game in American sports, and we're going to go over it and see what's what. So, uh, obviously, we kind of we can kind of look back and see, huh. like, the kind of the, you know, we didn't, we talked a little bit last week about the Eagles win over San Francisco yep. and the Chiefs win. And so after looking at those kind of games, like moving forward, what do you, what do you kind of, where are you leaning? Well, I'm really leaning towards Philadelphia. And the, the reason I really think is both the offensive and defensive lines are just impressive. The stack. You, you know what I mean? But it's Mahomes. So, yeah. you know, this is, I think it's going to be a pretty good game. I just don't know if Mahomes has the ball in his hand. There's five minutes left. I'd be worried. But. I think. At the beginning of, uh, like, right after watching San Francisco get yep. demolished yep. and and seeing seeing Kansas City going up against a really good Cincinnati team, it, I felt like it was it's so hard to kind of look at this game and have any kind of clear understanding of what's going to happen. I think that's why football is so fun. Mm -hmm. But, like, we were talking about it off air. The Eagles, they have been dominant. They have been dominant, but the like there's some concerns. Like mm -hmm. they haven't played against a Good great team. quarterback. Yeah. And that. when you're looking at like some of the quarterbacks they've played against, they played against Jared Goff, who put up 35. They put up they played against Cousins, who I guess some of us would say he's an okay <laughs> quarterback. I don't know if anybody's putting him up there with the yeah, upper echelon. Yeah, I don't know. Uh Trevor Lawrence put up 21 points, and that's with four turnovers. He wow. turned he fumbled the ball by himself four times that game and still put up 20, 21. Aaron Rodgers put up 33. Dak Prescott put up 40. 40. 40. That's pretty. That's pretty impressive. It is. And so the question moving forward, it's like they haven't played the upper echelon of quarterbacks. I, and Do you know much about Philadelphia's defensive backfield? Because I do not. And, well, I, I don't know as much about him, but I know that, like, San Francisco going into the game thought, like, there is some issues with their secondary. And there's ways that we can kind of yeah. take advantage of it, yep. but they never had a chance to do it. And so I think the main thing in this game, for my in my mind, is how well is Patrick Mahomes going to be protected, mm -hmm. and and you look on the other side of the ball, how well will the Chiefs' defensive line do against the offensive line of the Eagles, which has been dominant? Like dominant. you said, both of these, both their offensive line and defensive Eagles. line have been dominant yeah but football is so great because it doesn't matter <laughs> like well the other thing is is that um at the end of that game with cincinnati uh kansas city didn't have any receivers left you know what i mean so they're all dinged up it's two weeks yeah but you, you know what i mean i'm sure some of them are fine no that was the, that's but, the big but problem you they, don't know that either and you know, then they have Kelsey. You, you know what I mean? And they have their they have their running attack, which is always pretty good. Except for I, last week, it was not so good. I last don't know week. his name. Do you know the guy that they got? That's the seventh round draft. The pick? Pacheco. Yeah. Wow. He. I. I've never seen a guy run harder at getting up and getting back to the huddle as he does. Every time. Every time he. Something. Every time he runs. Somebody I know somebody described that he looks like he's angry at the ground. Yes. Like if you're if you're the turf or grass underneath. You might as well just put you in a box and put you <laughs> underground because he's trying to kill every blade yeah. of grass. And he always, it, it, when he's done, whether it's a four yard carry or a 20 yard carry, after he's gotten tackled, he's getting up as I if know. he's being like held down. And he's a maniac. A maniac. That's a seventh round draft pick. Yeah, you, but you they could, I mean? like, you could <laughs> just tell by the way, I guess they could look at him and in any of the, the footage that they had from him from Rutgers and say, there's something about this kid. Because yeah. obviously he's playing really, really well. I always feel like the thing with the Chiefs is that they have a great running back, and they're like, oh, man, this guy's really great. And then you think the next year they're going to be using that same running back, and then they get somebody else. They really go through them. Yeah. Then St. Hilaire was really yeah. good, and then there was another guy before that. I don't even remember now. But yeah. you're right. Every year they seem to come up with another one. They come up with another guy, a new guy who comes in and dominates. So, And so it's – I mean, I think that's – that's one of the things. Last week with Cincinnati, like the Chiefs couldn't really run the ball. Yeah. They really couldn't run the ball at all. And everyone, since what I've been reading about, what I've been seeing is that the the one weakness of the Eagles defense that uh, 
people seem to be able to exploit is the running. Uh -huh. Is they're able to run, and then the pre motion before the snap sometimes kind of messes with the the eagle secondary, which. And it also impacts their running game because they'll it kind of moves the linebacker out of the way. So lane. the question is, 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 is Mahomes going to be on the move and be able to throw into the, the next, the second tier of the secondary? Yeah. Or is he just going to have to get it and throw it in two seconds? And that's, and I think, well, and that's the thing, like, the tough part about Mahomes is that I don't, you can't really blitz him. No. You can't really blitz them, but the good thing about the Eagles' defense is that they don't need to blitz, yeah. and they have an they interchangeable know. kind of group of guys on the line. But when we look back to when Kansas City lost to Tampa Bay, their offensive line was so completely decimated, yeah. and, and Mahomes was dealing with an injury. Yeah. That was a bigger injury than the one he's dealing with now. And so it's going to be one of these questions. It's like, it's, I, to me, it's such a close matchup. Yeah. It's such a close matchup. Like, I know we had talked before, like, if you were to see a blowout, like, who would you pick? You'd... i pick Philadelphia, it, but but not a not a true blowout. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 21 to 3. Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to have Kansas City score three points. No, but that'd be maybe, crazy. You know, maybe, maybe you, you know what I mean, 27-17. Not really a blowout, but far enough a way that Mahomes it's, can't do it in one play. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? And I would say, and, and for me, it would, I would probably lead the other direction just because if Mahomes and that team gets on a roll, yeah. the running game of the Eagles is not going to be nearly as effective. That is very true. If They're going to have to throw the ball. They're going to have to throw the ball. And, and, and Hurts is dealing with this, with this uh, shoulder injury it's true. that has kind of limited his downfield throws. Last week, he had one big play. Yeah. And that was in the first quarter, and that was also an incompletion that was called a catch. That's right. And so it's going to be one of those things. If for me, it's going to be a, a lot about if the if the Eagles can keep the Chiefs off the field by by clock management and running that ball as much as they can, yeah. and then trying to get some three and outs when they can when they're playing. But it's it, that's why it's that's why to me it's it's so tough because I don't I don't see either team giving in because these are. It's the first time that like the two number one seeds are meeting in a long time. Uh, and it's crazy. I actually found a bunch of stats that are kind of weird. These are like the weird similarities between these two teams. They both have a record of 16 and three. That's not too crazy. They both scored 546 points. Exactly. 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 Both teams average 4.6 yards per carry, which is kind of a surprise because if you were to guess which one would be you the would, stronger, you'd think the Eagles would yes, be the would, stronger running team. Both teams have all, uh, six All Pros, and I think, and this is uh, this is also the first time both teams won a championship within the last five years. Uh -huh. So this is one of these things where it's like there's so many things yeah. stacking up for it to be a good game. Well, we were just talking about that with somebody the other day that how Philadelphia has completely remade their. I mean, this uh, what was the big kid with the red hair that was their quarterback oh, three years ago. Yeah. Before after Falls, it was they had, uh, what's his name? Dalton and uh, well but 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 yeah. the whole team has been remade. It's it's except for like except for the Kelsey. The Kelsey <laughs> and, and, and some of the other um, and some uh, of the other guys on there. Uh, Fletcher Cox. Yeah. There's a couple, but most of the team has completely changed. It's yeah, which is it's in, I mean, this is it's one of the things that's also so incredible. It's like we have Coach Reed is going against his former team. Yes. Which is gonna be you know, there's mixed. There's going to be some emotions on both sides of that, yeah. and I mean, there's a lot of interesting things about the Super Bowl. Uh, the Kelsey brothers, two brothers, going at it. You know, they start a podcast. They're just having some talks, and it's all fun and games now. It's been fun and games, and it's been fun and games up until Sunday. And I wonder if the podcast will implode after that because one of them is going to be so dejected and hurt. Well, they're professionals. They are professionals, but they're. It was 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 Kelsey the center on Philadelphia when they won the last. Yeah, time? so they both have a championship. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's kind of, nice. You know, it's nice. That's nice. They both have a championship. Only one of them has lost the Super Bowl. That's Travis. Tra Maybe uh, their mother needs to get involved. Their mom <laughs> has already decided. Their mom has predicted that Travis will win. Really? The mom predicted it, and the dad, I think the parents are going to be on Travis's sideline because he doesn't have anybody. Like, uh, Jason has his family, 
and his wife is going to be there with the OBGYN because she's like probably going to give birth. Oh, really? In the, which is going to be crazy because at some point, if she gives birth. Well, they have the tent. Yeah. <laughs> put her, they'll shuffle her down into the blue tent. And that's oh where they give birth. That's what, I mean, that's going to be, it's going to be weird if there is a baby born during the Super Bowl from one of the players. That's, I don't know if that's ever happened before. Um, and then this is also the first well, time. Well, Yeah, uh, Yeah. <laughs> this will be the first time also that uh, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, two black quarterbacks are meeting. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about this. Well, it's, I, it's a I very, it's a big. I didn't think about that. I, I, and that's the funny thing. I didn't think about it either until people tell me about it. Yeah. It's a big deal in the sense that it's like history being made, but this will not be the last time. No. Yeah. Nope. So uh, it's, but it's, I honestly think that this is going to be one of the, I'm hoping that it's one of the best games. Cause this, the, if you look back at the whole season, we've had such a good season of football. You know, there's so many. I, a lot of people say to me that there's a lot of bad teams. Then parody, there's some parody at the top. Yeah. But then there's a huge drop off. And that, I mean, yeah, you know that, I mean? that happens. So, you know, it, it's been a good year. There's been a lot of good games. But, like, some of those games that were on Amazon, what was it? Is that oh, Sunday? well, yeah. Yeah, Thursday night games. They were horrible games. I mean. They've been horrible since the, like, horrible. since Thursday night games came to be. Yes. They're never that good. No. And I think it's because the players are on such a strict schedule yeah. otherwise. And you throw them off. Completely off. And football is a sport where, like, you play this game. Like, it's, it's an insane sport to play. Like, my kids will never be allowed to play it. That's just yeah. the way it is. You know, we're not big people, so I don't go getting blowed up. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, it's a tough game to play because you never know who's going, to, who's going to win. And even when you have these teams that are terrible, like, it, t- it doesn't take much for them to switch it around and become really, really good. They're professionals. Yeah, they're all and, and they've been playing for a long time. And- uh, you never know what can happen. Yeah, you never and, know. And, and you, this this game could turn on one play. One play, somebody gets hurt. Exactly. Like everything when you look, changes. You know, like Brock I mean? Purdy getting hurt last game is a completely yeah, changes the way they play that game, which yeah. is which was it was just so unfortunate watching that. And that's why I hope this game we just go through it. Yeah. We don't have any kind of controversy with the referees, and we yeah, don't have any issues with. Uh, injuries and stuff like that. I don't even know who the referees are, but I heard that Kansas City does not like the referees that have been chosen. I don't. Oh, I don't know. True. I'm not sure who it is, and I don't know why they. I have no idea why, but that's what it's come to nowadays. And that's unfortunate yeah. because nobody wants to. I don't. The, yeah. You don't want to talk about the refs. No. And we were talking about it off camera that all the refs are being all the good quote unquote good refs are being bought up. And, by and TV, by TV, and so now they're in the in the booth, which is unfortunate, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But there should be like honestly, if, like those refs should be they as much as they should be hired by TV, they should also still kind of be within the ref. Pro, like there should well, be. Well, don't you think that they should be full time employees of the NFL? I would imagine they're not. No, no, no. a lot of them like. When the season's off, they go back to being lawyers or yes. doing these other jobs which, that they do. Which they need to, that's the job, you know? They need mean? to train all year. And, I, you know, it's like when you look at the, the F1 drivers, yeah. F1 drivers, they do like the light test. They got to, you know, oh, check yeah. on their reflexes. Yeah. We need to put these refs in some kind of training because some <laughs> of the stuff that they do is doesn't make any sense. They need to be trained better. Some guys can't, like, I always like, it's happened a couple of times. You know, there's the guy that holds the ball. Yeah. Before, you know, until they're ready to play. Yeah. And then he runs backwards out of the frame. Yeah. And sometimes he goes head over heels, you know? Yeah. That's 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 pretty embarrassing. And that's why yeah. training is necessary. Yes. You got to okay. practice your backwards running. Yeah. Um, I actually saw a video recently. It was like a little kid who was refing a basketball game. And it was like... Like, you know, most little kids are playing in the basketball game. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, little yeah. dude was, he, he had the rest. whistle, he was doing his signs, he had everything <laughs> down. I'm like, that's the kind of, we need to get them in young. <laughs> if so, if you're a nerd who can't play the sport, but yeah. you want to be involved yeah. and cause chaos sometimes, become a well, ref. Well, that's another thing I've seen four or five times in the last four or five weeks, where the chains broke. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, a, where's the spare change? The chains broke. <laughs> They're running like double plays because somebody didn't put the ball in the right place. 
You know, I mean, but it's better than remember when they had the uh, the replacement refs, yeah, and that and you saw how bad yeah. it really could be. Yeah. So as much as like people complain about yeah. the refs, they're it's a tough it's a tough sport to play because on every or on every play there's probably a penalty, every play definitely. Yeah, and that's the question is is you know they always talk about. Um, Especially in basketball, you kind of feeling out the ref for what's a foul. Yeah, what you can do, you know what I mean. But in a big game, you know, it needs to be kind of known. You just so need to call can, it across the board. Know, yeah, and you know, you, that's what you just hate to have plays, especially early on, that dictate a game that mm -hmm. that you know. No, when there's uh, when the refs, like when the refs are visible, and it's like. And they, they, their imprint on the game is becoming, it's too apparent. It's not fun anymore. Yeah. Because yeah. then it's the next day on Monday, everyone's complaining about the refs yeah. instead of the game. Yeah. And I know Cincinnati fans are like complaining about like blocks in the back and stuff. But if you also look back, there is plenty of calls yeah. that, the, that the refs missed going in the other direction. There is. It's, it's just the feeling that you got. Yeah, it's being. From all of the things compounded through that last part of the game. That made it feel that way. I, yeah, it's not necessarily true. They just, just had that impression. Had, yeah. And one thing I do know is, is their coach was way more focused on that line judge than he was what was going on in the field at a lot of times yeah. at the end of the game. And that's yeah. and that's what really kind of it kind of ruins it ruins the game sometimes. And I'm, so I'm hoping that this game doesn't have any of that. Yep. I just want to see two teams go at it. And I and like I remember there was, I mean there was a. Uh, wasn't there a roughing a passer penalty that was called that was like in one of the games prior to last week that was like it was so ridiculous too. Just barely touched him. Yeah, man. barely touched the guy, and so they they just got to make sure because this is the well, one of those games. And I mean, Josh Allen, you know, he's you're gonna jump on his back and he's still gonna go twenty yards. Yeah, and then you get a call and you get for a penalty, penalty if you go too hard to try and get him to the ground. And you can't. Have, Anywhere near the knees, you can't hit him anywhere above the shoulders. You can only hit him on this little dot here on his yeah. stomach. You know, and, and then when you when you tackle him, you got to give him a <laughs> Tempur-Pedic pillow and make sure that you got a masseuse nearby oh, just in case, you know. And, and, you know, once again, a lot of that's dictated by the league saying this is what you're going to call it. Yeah. We're trying to help people and, and not get anybody hurt. There was It was funny. Last week there was a sack that Chris Jones had on Burrow. Yeah. Where he got him and then he kind of just sat him sat down. down yeah. Just sat him he down. He did and, that twice. And him and Burrow were under, it was an understanding there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, I'm just going to put you to bed. Yeah. It's like, I'm just going to, you know, just kiss your forehead as I put you down, <laughs> tap, like tuck you in, make sure you're okay. They're going to show that sack to all the yeah, defensive linemen how, in the league. I mean, you go this back what? and no. you go back and look at like, like some of the hits from like the no. 90s and the 80s. And it's like the quarterback's neck is being <laughs> jacked up. He's being thrown to oh, the ground. Yeah. With, with helmets that were like purchased at Western Auto. You know what I mean? That was the equipment. I have a helmet that I, I was way back and there's just this little net. In yeah, you're place. almost better off just not having a helmet. Yeah, you really are. Because really are. With, the, with the helmet, you have like a false sense of security. Yeah. And you're like, I can just lean in like that to somebody, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense. All right. Before we get to the, I know we kind of predict. We haven't. I haven't given my prediction yeah. yet. But before we get there, there's some other things that that uh, are going on in this game that we have to talk about too. Some of the prop bets. Okay. So we're going to talk about the Gronk's kick. Oh boy. Everyone's been talking about Gronk's kick. I know. I think it's like a 32 or 33 yard kick. Do you think he's going to make it? I do not. You do not. I do not. Why? I I just. I think he's going to kick it, and I think he's either going to drill it. He, I, I just don't think he's going to make it. I just think that it's – you he, You have to learn how to kick a ball He's like been practicing that. with Vinatieri. Oh, has he really? He's been training with him. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, well, maybe then. It's just the way you approach the ball and everything, and I. he's just – He's an awkward guy. He's an awkward guy, you yeah. know what I mean? If you wanted to run through a wall, he yeah, if you that, want him to, you know what I mean? If you asked if – Gronk runs into the field goal post and knocks down the field goal. He would do that. He'd be like, okay, you know yes. I mean? But well, maybe if he's been been um, yeah, he's been practicing. So I feel like he's, I feel like he's gonna do it. But no matter what, everybody loves Gronk. I know. You know, he's uh, probably one of the most likable players to have ever played, despite yep. having played for, you know who. 
<laughs> he's still one of the. I've I've never had a problem with Gronk. Yeah. So I, I believe in him. I so here's a good question: Just do, mm-hmm. is is Kelsey better than Gronk? Oh. There's, there's a talk. There's talk of that. So I would say, I would say Gronk so far is better in clutch big time moments. Um, I think Kelsey, in terms of his probably IQ on how he reads a defense, he's probably smarter. He's probably a little bit faster. But Gronk, whenever they needed a big play, and whenever Tom Brady needed a big play, Gronk was the guy. Yeah. And so um, I don't think it's over yet. No. But I think Gronk is still a little bit ahead in my mind. One of the things about Gronk is, is he was as strong as he, but he took, he, you know how Brady used to collapse like a house of cards when somebody would sack him. Yeah. And, and Gronk just got the crap beat out of him by yeah. people, but hitting at the knees and everything like that. And Kelsey doesn't. Kelsey never seems to even get hit. The two guys hit each other and he just ducks down on the ground he's, below. Kelsey is so impressive because of how evasive he is. He really is. He really it doesn't is. make any sense that he's that evasive. No. Like he's a big dude. And when he was running, you don't think it's that fast, but he's outrunning everybody. I know. And so I would say in terms of like, there's, I mean, they both, their hands are both, they both have really good hands. Yeah. I just think that so far Gronk has come, you know, Gronk has shown up in the big games not to say that Kelsey hasn't, um, but when it came to like Super Bowl, like yeah. Gronk's there. And yep. it didn't seem like they would have anybody else, but Gronk could still catch the ball. And he was unguardable in certain moments. Well, he did play in the Atlanta game. Yeah. Yeah. And so my other thing is like, like if somebody said to me, you know, it would, like right now, I would see, I would, if I was Gronk, I'd say, I'll play for you, but only in the fourth quarter. Because then he could still do Gronk type things, but yeah. not have to deal with getting beat up as much. Listen, but at the same time, it's Gronk. He's I living a good Jerry life. Jerry Jones said for him to give him a call. Yeah, <laughs> just right. one. Give him one quarter, one quarter, and he'll he'll do exactly what you need him to do. Um, okay, what else you got? So we got. Uh, now you, I know that you're a huge fan of Rihanna. This is what you told me off screen. <laughs> you said you have you love uh, all of her albums. Yeah, uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. But uh, sure one of the props that is. My wife is looking forward to it. Yeah, immensely. that's good. I like immensely. I like Rihanna. So yeah. one of the the questions is because I don't know enough about her musical. I don't either. You know, I know the last album she had I thought was really good, but I couldn't name you a single song. Yeah. Um, but the question is, what color hair will Rihanna come out with? Well, I think it's going to be multiple colors. It's and her good. first color though, what's the first oh, one? Oh, I uh, oh, well, I. I wonder if she's a fan of one team or the other. So probably mm. that's that's the question. And that I would, would be controversial. And I would say that if uh, I'm, I'm, I have no idea. I really don't. Have I think. Idea. I, I mean, to me, I think she's going to come out with her hair. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> yes. That's what. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Another prop bet: Who will score the first TD? Uh, one of those little scat backs for Philadelphia. So Philadelphia will yeah, score you know, the first Boston, team. Boston Scott, or I mean, there's about three or four of them they have. I don't even know their names, but they're all pretty good. Okay, uh, we have some other ones. What will the first penalty of the game be? Ah. Uh, it'll be something. It'll, it'll be um, a lineman moving early. So you think false start? False start. I'm gonna go with a holding. Ah. You know, offensive holding that usually screws everybody. Yeah. You know, at yeah. some point. Well, they, they, those those penalties are such drive killers. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's yeah, it's thing. like the holding on offense and the defensive holding are two just like and, backbreakers. And you, you know, it it it, it always happens on a twenty yard game. So you had twenty yards. Yep. So you lose the twenty, and then you lose ten. Ten. Yeah. You know what it's, I mean? It yeah. Kills you. Um, will there be a picture of the Kelsey brothers as children in the game? Yeah. Uh, yes. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um, oh, who will have a longer pass completion, Mahomes or Hertz? I would say Mahomes because Hertz doesn't throw the ball deep anymore yep. for, for a little bit at least. Uh, and what color Gatorade will be poured on the winning coach? Um, I think it's all it's usually red. Isn't it? I was going to say orange. It's either it's orange, orange or yeah, red. Yeah. One of those two. You know, but the thing is about the pass play, getting back to that, Hertz could throw a three-yard pass. That goes runs, forever. That runs you know, true, they get true, through true. the defense, so you never know. 
Um, I mean, those are those are some of the those are some. How, of the how, about, how about this one? What's this one? Who's gonna run for more yardage, Hertz oh, or uh, Mahomes? Mahomes? I would say Hertz. It's okay. like a, like a guarantee almost. Well, Mahomes always ends up. He does, he does a little scramble. He does a little scramble. Oh, I'm gonna pass it over here. Oh wait, I'm gonna pass it over, and everybody he, spreads out. The, the funny thing is, like when you look at the the running styles of both, one runs like a running back. Yes. Uh, Hertz runs like a running back, and he. He can squat a million pounds, so he can literally run through you. Yeah. But I don't know if they're going to want him to, you know, put that shoulder in jeopardy. Um, and then when Mahomes seems to run just as fast as the fastest person chasing him. Yeah. So whoever's chasing him, he can barely, he's just always, barely get away from. Well, that's him. what he's trying to do. He's trying to bait that guy into getting there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's done some like I've seen some moves where Mahomes, like a couple of years ago when he played in the. Uh, is it the conference championship game against the Tennessee Titans when he had that big run at the end of the first half when he looked back and he just he he's so shifty yeah. in a weird way. He's not it, shifting like I Barry Sanders. Or I'm gonna, like I don't know this rule. Could he pass to himself somehow? <laughs> I think he has. Do you know what I mean? I think he's completed a pass to himself before. The guy's got a can of me through up here and goes and gets it. And, you know, I, he might just well do that. He might. I mean, I, I would say, like, if we're going to get back to the predictions, I hate predicting against – I actually, I hate predicting for the Chiefs. I like watching the Chiefs play. I'm a, I'm a Patrick Mahomes fan. I'll just yep. put that out there now. I'm a fan of Mahomes, and I hate, like, choosing them to win. Yeah. Because I always feel like – if you're if you're a fan of the Chiefs, you're gonna get you're gonna have a heart attack at some point in the game. The Eagles fans for the last three games have really had like or the last two games have had no heart attacks. No, you know they just kind of been coasting on through. And in the Chiefs, every single game the Chiefs play, yeah. it seems like it's a freaking heart attack. It's true. And so, I I want the Chiefs to win, but it's so hard for me to pick them mainly because I, I it's just the the has, Eagles have such a they have, have a squad. They, has Kansas City done it with smoke and mirrors a little bit in the last three weeks? I don't. I mean, I don't think so. Their defense came to play last week. Yep. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is coming on. He's a he's a damn good quarterback. <laughs> like, I think the thing that people are probably not giving enough credit to is the Kansas City defense. Like, they went against. They have all these rookies. All these. Rookies. And they lost their top corner, and they still held. Yeah. They still held those guys down. You had Jamar Chase. All these like Higgins, these are big time players who are shut down by a with a, with a great quarterback. Like yeah. you know, he's a top. Burrow is in the top three of quarterbacks. Well, I think we talked about it. I really don't understand what happened with Joe Mixon in that game. They just stopped running. They just stopped running. They gave it. They gave it to to P Ryan. Was that his name? Yeah, um, I didn't they, understand they, that. But, but Mixon was hardly on the field. It did. Yeah, that's it did so. It's awesome. one of those things where it's like I think that's why football is so hard because it's. One game you see them do something and you expect that the next game. Like I think Well and, and, and coaches say, Oh, they're all gonna expect us to give it to him. So we'll Yeah, so we're gonna do that. Yeah. And, and we don't know that. That's just sec you know, looking back at stuff, you could it's easy. Yeah. It's twenty twenty. Hindsight is twenty twenty. So I, I mean, I will say this. I'm going to do this just because I feel like I have to. I feel like the Chiefs are going to win because Mahomes has not had his greatest game yet. And I think after losing the last Super Bowl, he's coming in super focused. Chris Jones and company are coming in super focused. That defense is, pro is playing the best they've ever played. And I think the Eagles, they haven't been getting lucky. They're, they're a damn good team. Like, there's a reason why they're there. Yeah. But I don't know if they would have had the same success that the 49ers had against Dallas. And I don't know that the Giants are a good indicator of how good Philly is. Yep. And so I think it's going to be a matter of how well can Philly play against a great quarterback and not just a great quarterback, the best in the game right now. I, I The way I look at it is, is the weakness in Philadelphia as a whole, as I see it, is they really haven't had adversity. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. they, you know, something doesn't go their way. Kickoff return for a touchdown. Um, you know what I mean? And then uh, they, they go three and out, and then Mahomes goes down and at least gets a field. So now it's 10 nothing. Yeah. And now Philadelphia has to say, well, we got to – do and we stick to our plan? Do we change? Because they all – that's another thing about them. They go far on fourth down like 
a lot. Three quarters of the time, it's fourth and two, and they're going for it. And I think that's, and I don't think that's going to change. That's not going to change this time around. But if they get themselves behind, yeah, you can't that's, screen game so, it so all there's the that. Way. So you know, I'm kind of picking Philadelphia to win because they feel like a juggernaut, especially on the defensive the, end. The defensive end, yeah. and, and and I don't know with Mahomes and the receivers being dinged up in some way. Yeah, you know, one twisted ankle. And, and and they might be in trouble. But I always preface that with Mahomes might just... Yeah, that's the thing. Mahomes, like, to me... Could just change the deal. Like, when you look at, like, like the best players to play these games, like, I mean, I think Jalen Hurts actually has a lot of the, lot of the qualities in terms of leadership and professionalism yeah. that Mahomes has. Um, I don't think he's as talented of a thrower, obviously. No. But that offense... Is a smart offense. They're a tough offense. Nobody, like, basically no one gives up sacks. I think they got one guy who's given up sacks. Yeah. And so that's going to be the, that's going to be the determining factor. But I, I think that, I think that it, I would be surprised. There's a reason why Mahomes and Andy Reid have been to the conference championship five times in a row. There's a reason why they've been to now their third Super Bowl. Uh, there's a culture there that is, persistent and it seems like they're on a they're like I think Mahomes' career is a, a career of destiny like this guy is playing like no one we've ever seen before mm -hmm. and so in order for him to get to that next level yep he's got to win this game because you don't want to go in there with like a one and two record in the Super Bowl I think yeah. he knows that I think Travis Kelsey is ready I think they're they're probably so hungry from that loss. Well, there's six or eight plays. There's Chris Jones. There's, yeah. there's that Frank thing. Clark. There's those four or five guys who've been along there. with Holmes who've been there the whole time with Andy Reid and the yeah. defensive coach and the enemy. Yeah. You know, they've so they've all, they're, they're, they're the guys, you know what I mean? So it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. The Eagles are always a tough team, though, even when they when I, I mean when they won. Yeah. You know, I know it's a different squad, but it's there's something about the toughness of the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Their only problem is, is if the Eagles win. Yeah, their fans are gonna go nuts. I know. I saw a video of Eagles fans after they won their other Super Bowl. One of them was eating horse poop. <laughs> he was eat, he was eating, being cheered on by multiple like a crowd of people, and like there is like a cop nearby who's like yeah, like like pumped up. So we're dealing with an odd bunch. <laughs> So if they win, wow. we're you know we're gonna see a lot well, more. One of the things that, that I you were talking about Philadelphia not giving up sacks, but that's because on first and second down they, they get, run it. They off. get three or four yards, so they're only in third and three. Yeah, they're not in third and seven or third and nine. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because because if that's the case, then that means that either Jalen Hurts is going to have to break the pocket and get ten yards. Mm -hmm. Or he's going to have to hit somebody on the numbers yeah. at 12, 12 yards. Which he can do. Which he can do. But that is Frank Clark and, and Chris Jones. And Chris Jones. Jones. And then you have this. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, and you have a secondary who picked off Joe Burrow twice. If, 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 if Philadelphia can keep the ball rolling like they have been doing. And, and execute in the red zone. It's going to be like a steamroller. But... Both, yeah, both teams have the ability to just put up numbers on every drive. Yes. And so it's going to be a matter of like, and I, I think defense tends to win championships, obviously, you know. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, is that they're going against a quarterback who every time you play against the top defense, it makes it look like they're not a top defense. Well, I, I hate to bring this back to you, but in the Atlanta, New England city, where, where they were up 28 to 3, defense didn't win championships. Yeah. Did, mm -hmm. did you see what I mean? The yeah. Patriots defense didn't win the championship. Yeah. And Atlanta's defense didn't hold the championship. You know what I mean? I, Sometimes great quarterbacks, great offense. They can, yeah. They can, yeah. Out trumps was it like everything. A, like in basketball, a great shot can greet, yeah. beat great defense. And yeah. same thing with like a great pass can greet, beat great defenses as well. And so that's why I'm going to lean towards the Chiefs. <laughs> I'm leaning towards the Chiefs. But I don't I, think I, it's... Are you going to give a number? Uh, I actually think that it would probably be a reasonably high-scoring game. I think... You know, I, I, I think they're going to win by maybe three. You know, it's like, you know, 30-something, 30 35 points is what the Chiefs could put up. Yeah. But it's also, that's the thing. Like, if they put up that many points, they'll win. 
I think if the Chiefs yes. put up 30 something points, they're going to win. If it's if it's in the low 20s, I think Philadelphia will win. Exactly. So I, and I would agree with that too. So I, I think it's going to be a matter of how well can this defense defend yeah. the Chiefs offense, and then how well can the Chiefs defense defend Jalen Hurts and them? Because I don't think anybody was expecting what we saw in Cincinnati after what Cincinnati did to the Bills. Yeah. Which is, I think, kind of a game that was kind of, kind of skewed just because of the weather. But um, yeah, I think the Bills, the were, Bills. Run, were running on empty all the way back to when they played the Patriots at the end of the season. If it wasn't for those two dime kickoffs, yeah. they would have lost that exactly. game. Yeah, they, he did not play well. You know what I mean? And no, and that's I, I mean that's like when you Mahomes, Burrow, Allen. Yeah, they're those are you consider those the top three in the in the league, especially yeah. now that Tom Brady is yep. gone. But Jalen Hurts is a different kind of quarterback, and he has a different style. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the the weight of the game is on his shoulders as much as it's going to be on Patrick's yep, shoulders. I agree. I agree. Uh, but I think it's going to be a good game. I don't think that there's going to be a blowout. I think it should be. A, I'm hoping for a good game. I keep saying that it's gonna. If Philadelphia is going to win, they're going to win by more than seven, because if it's within seven, Mahomes has a Mahomes. chance. <laughs> Mahomes is going to be around. So yeah. that, in, in that way, I say 28-21. I really don't want to say that because I'm kind of trying to pick Philadelphia, but I guess I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say Philadelphia 27-24. Okay. I mean, that makes sense to me. So It's going to be a, it's going to be a great game. Yes. I'm very excited about it. And so when that game is done, we'll see you guys we'll see you guys here next week. Next week. And we'll have we'll go over the game, we'll go over it, some of the controversies and we'll go over a legacy, you know, because it's and, a big and, time game. And how Rihanna did and how Rihanna, most importantly, yes. how did Rihanna do? Did she sing my favorite songs? Because <laughs> if she didn't, I'm turning it off. She, she will. Yeah. I'm sure she will. <laughs> all right. That's all for this episode of Thanks. the Unnamed Sports Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Rob. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye.